Welcome to the third part of the tutorial, where we'll further develop our sub-biomes, learn how to debug mask materials, and add scalar vector parameters. Sub-biomes we've made so far could be considered placeholders, as each of them contains only a single species. They all output a value of 0 0.1, except the empty sub-biome. If multiple sub-biomes output exactly the same value in some region, they all spawn there. That's the case in our test level, where grassland, forest and rocky sub-biomes cover the whole map. If one of the sub-biomes outputs a higher value in a given region, only that sub-biome will spawn there. Let's use this knowledge to make a clear distinction between grasslands and forests. First, we'll start by adding grass species to the forest sub-biome. Grass species is now shared between grassland and forest sub-biomes. In the second step, we'll add a noise function to the grassland material. We could use a hand-painted mask here as well. After that change, grassland should output a value higher than 0.1 for certain regions, and in those regions, it will replace the forest sub-biome. Let's generate the world. Hmm. It seems that grasslands took over the whole map. That's not what we wanted. Let's debug what happened. We can use the preview tool for that. In the tool, we need to select which asset we want to debug. We select a grassland sub-biome. We can see that the whole map is covered in bright red color, which means that the grassland outputs a high value everywhere and will spawn everywhere. This is probably caused by our noise setup. Our noise function outputs values between 0 0.7 and 1. Let's change the range to 0 and 1. OK, that's better. But the output is still too high and the pattern is too dense. Let's decrease the noise scale from 3 to 1. OK, that's better. Let's decrease the scale to 0 0.25. That's good. Now let's make the black parts darker. For that, we need to decrease the minimal noise value. We'll set it to minus one. The debug shows in red the regions where the grassland subbiome is likely to be spawned, and in black the regions where the other subbiomes will likely be. Let's generate the world. The results match our expectations now. If we enable the debug view, we can see that grasslands fill the red regions and forests fill the black regions. To make grasslands more distinct, we can add some bushes there. We can easily do it by duplicating the grass species and swapping the meshes to spawn. We can also tweak the noise function and spacing. takes just a few seconds to accomplish that. The last thing we'll do is make rocks spawn only on the slopes. We can do it by adjusting the rock species growth material. We need to add the slope function from the biomes group. Set minimal and maximal slope and use an if node to discard regions that exceed our desired range of slope. Let's use the debug tool to see if we properly configured the growth mask. Remember to regenerate the world if the debug is invisible or is outdated. Okay, it looks exactly the way we wanted. The slopes are marked in red, everything else is black. To make life easier for the other team members, or ourselves, we can make our parameters editable from outside of the growth material. Let's test if they work. 
they seem to work as expected. That's it for this tutorial. If you liked it, please subscribe to our channel and visit our website, errandphoton.com.